Hello, my name is Anna. I am coming to you from Zurich in Switzerland, where I live. And I am a passionate knitter and crafter. I like everything textile and fiber arts. And this is now my first attempt at recording a video podcast. And we will see how it goes. Maybe it is episode one, maybe it is episode zero. <laughs> um, yeah, so let's just start. Um, you can find me on Ravelry under the nickname Nainiela and as uh, Dunkelgrün on Instagram. Dunkelgrün is also going to be the name of this podcast and it's a German word which means dark green, which is one of my favorite colors. And yeah, let me introduce myself shortly. Uh, as I said, my name is Anna. I come originally from Austria, Europe, not Australia. Um, so my native language is German, that's why I have a slight accent. I mean, an Austrian German accent, not a German German accent. Um, and I have moved to Zurich in Switzerland about 10 years ago to uh, study chemistry at the University of Zurich. And just recently I have uh, defended my PhD, so I am a scientist, which means that takes all, most of the time of my day. So all the time that is left I spend knitting or thinking about knitting or doing other crafts such as uh, spinning, I also very much enjoy dyeing fibers or yarn or fabrics also and I do some fiber preparation and also some sewing. So uh, why do I do this, this video? I have uh, really enjoyed watching podcasts on YouTube while I am crafting. It's uh, very inspiring to see what other people are doing and yeah, it, it is just a really nice community. People are really friendly and uh, everyone is such a such an interesting character with their own taste and, and choices and creativity. I think this is really, uh, really nice about the podcasting world. And at some point I had a desire that I want to contribute myself also with a, the, with a podcast. So let's see how this goes. I would like to show you some of the things that I um, that I do, and maybe maybe it will it will continue like that. Let me just mention uh, some podcasts that I have really uh, enjoyed watching and that have really inspired me, or that I watched uh, regularly. There are actually a lot, but I have now picked out a few to mention in this first episode. Maybe in the future I will mention some others. Um, first of all, uh, I want to mention the Yarn Gasm podcast by Kristin, which is uh, really great. I really love watching it. And also the Stitched in Sweden podcast by Maria is uh, a huge inspiration to me. And also the Wolf und Schafe podcast by Magdalena, who actually lives rather close to me here in Switzerland. And we have also met in person at the Swiss Wool Festival. Hello Magdalena! <laughs> um, yeah, then there's also the Hey Sister podcast, which I find very um, fresh and full of... Uh, yeah, it's a very cheerful uh, group. Or the two sisters are very cheerful girls and I, I enjoy uh, inviting them for a knitting session into my living room. So then... Also, one last one that I would like to mention, it's a very different one from the other podcasts. Uh, I have only recently discovered it and started watching their episodes. It's the Fruity Knitting podcast. Uh, they actually pull up the format as m almost a bit like a TV show. It's very professional and they do interviews and um, very, she goes very detailed into, into the project that she's working on and I think it's really nice. I would like to show you what kind of things I am doing so that you can 
get an idea about who I am and what kind of crafts you can expect from me. The first thing I'd like to show you is a pair of socks that is dyed in a rainbow gradient. It's and they're knee high socks, look kind of huge here on camera, but they really only come up to my knees. They have a fish lips kiss heel kind of, but it's actually a German short row heel, but it looks similar to the fish lips kiss heel. I should maybe not call it fish lips kiss heel if it's not. Um, so yeah, the story of these socks, they were actually quite a lot of work because I wanted to have that rainbow gradient and I wanted to have it identical in both and I couldn't find any yarn like that that suited my needs. So I also didn't, didn't really have an access to a sock blank because I couldn't find any online shop in Switzerland that sold sock blanks and sometimes it is very expensive to order uh, stuff to Switzerland because this country is not in the European Union and you have import taxes and shipping is usually complicated. So. Uh, when it's not absolutely necessary, I try to avoid <laughs> ordering things from outside of Switzerland or I order them to my family in Austria and uh, pick them up when I am there. Anyway, I wanted to do that urgently. I didn't want to wait until I can get my hands onto a sock blank. So I just made my own sock blank by hand. But I have to say that I did not knit it, I crocheted it, which goes a bit faster to me. So I took some large crochet, a large crochet hook and held the yarn double. I divided the 100 gram skin into 250 gram balls and held the yarn double and crocheted a blank. Then I dyed that blank. Then I opened it up, which was actually quite fiddly because I wanted to separate the two, uh, the two strands from each other again. And then that was quite fiddly. But in the end, I need the two socks and they came out identical and I love them. And it's also very interesting to know that and this is exactly 100 grams of yarn and it, they're exactly up to my knees when I wear them. Maybe I'll insert a picture here. Alright, so this was the first one. The second one is a bit less exciting. It's just a normal um, pair of socks, which I have also never worn. Yeah, except for trying on so I can show them to you still in a nice way. So this is... Uh, I improvised everything here. The yarn I dyed also myself. It's a, quite a crazy color with a different kinds of green and some red and brown flecks in it. I really like it. And so at the, uh, at the cuff I have put a little seed stitch segment, which is actually a triangle. So if I maybe hold that like this. Maybe you can see that. So, yeah, um, what I wanted to say about these is that this was my first attempt at doing a fish lips kiss heel, and I mean a fish lips kiss heel really according to the pattern. And how that turned out, you can see here. So I knit them toe up and did everything exactly as the pattern described. I made this cardboard cutout and everything, and yeah, it looks like this and I have to say I didn't enjoy it so much I was a bit disappointed by the by the fish lips kiss heel because I did a German short row heel before and in that pattern the construction of the heel is actually the same the stitch count is actually the same to the one the, the German short row heel that I knew before that I have I have to say from a German um, it's a German instruction German language instruction um, so maybe that is not so available to the American or Anglo-Saxon world of knitting. But I, I prefer much more the German short rows because I think they look much neater than this twin stitch knit and twin stitch pearl that you find in the fish lips kiss heel. So the second sock I made uh, using my original method of heel construction of using German short rows and I enjoy it more. The, the, the difference is really slight, you can almost not tell. Like, So this is fish lips kiss and this is German short row. Alright, anyway, this is a pair of socks that I like very much. The color is very cute and I like knitting toe up. This was really cool, I have to say, this Judy's magic cast on is really good. 
Uh, one other thing I wanted to show you is um, a sewing project that I did. It is really cool, really flashy. Um, I knitted, uh, <laughs> I sewed myself a knitting needle case out of this cool fabric. So this is the other side with, uh, you can see I like rainbows. Um, it has a button here to close it and this here is an old hairband that just happened to match in color and yeah so let me open that up it is a roll like this these fabrics um, I have dyed myself these batik ones and this outside fabric here I have bought some time ago, when I was in the US, I bought it at Walmart. It was like a, a touristy thing for me to go to Walmart, because we don't have that here in Europe. Maybe at some places they have that, I don't even know. At least not in the countries that I have lived in, in Europe. Next up, there is another project I want to show you, and it's the one that I am wearing. This is the Campsite Cardigan by Alicia Plumber which I have knit out of uh, Malabrigo Rios in the Tormenta colorway. I really, I really like how it turned out. I did a couple of modifications, actually quite a few, and I did, took detailed notes about that on my project page on Ravelry. Um, especially what I did differently is I did not do the last chart, this is an easy modification. I just there are four charts and I made just three and extended each one. And what else? Oh yeah, I did um, something that is called a surface slip stitch crochet along the raglan edges. Here you can see that uh, ridge here and maybe also here in the back. This is maybe some people would not like that because it stands out a lot but it stabilizes the raglan a bit so if you have a one piece top down construction sometimes the problem with garments is that they are a bit too floppy they fall out of shape because everything is stretchy instead of when you have a seam it kind of puts things um, it makes it a bit more rigid so that it stays in shape and this uh, this surface slip stitch is kind of a fake seam. It, it creates a little sturdiness. And I found a very good tutorial uh, for that on a blog called Look at what I made. I will link to that. So yeah, and the rest I did also have some other modifications like, but I don't want to go too much into detail. You can, if you're interested, if you want to make that cardigan and you're interested in the modifications, you can find my project page on Ravelry. All right, so now you got maybe a bit of an idea of what kind of things I make and now I would like to show you what is currently in progress and it's actually not so much. I have on the needles a pair of socks which lives in this cute little project bag which is also made out of fabric that I dyed myself and you see that this bag is really small. I have designed that uh, size because if you put that into your handbag or your backpack, it takes up almost no space. It's really, really small and very, very portable. It is a bit crammed inside, but it's just enough to fit a pair of socks on DPN. So. And I like also this drawstring, so you can knit out of the bag without having a zipper that um, clings to your yarn or anything. So. So here is what's inside this bag, a sock for my mom, actually this yarn I also dyed myself and it was a Christmas gift for my mom but she meant that she w would prefer if I would knit these socks for her because yeah, <laughs> she asked me, she's a great sock knitter my mom, she's, she made, basically also told me how to knit and she helped me so much in the beginning, every time I had a mistake I ran back to my mom and so she deserves to have a nice pair of socks in very beautiful colors. So it is a top-down construction, it has a heel flap here this time. I like to go back and forth between heel flap and 
um, short row heel. So I love the color. Does it come across well on the camera? I hope so. I really like it. So yeah, I'm knitting it on 2.5 millimeter needles um, and these are uh, the knit, knit Pro. Yeah, Knit Pro, I think, but I don't know. Naturals? Symphony? I'm not sure. But they are this wood that is laminated birch wood and uh, I really like them. If you have only knitted with bamboo needles so far, uh, bamboo wooden needles, and you did not like it because they bend, you should try these. Because these laminated birch wood needles. Because they don't bend at all. So this is actually the, I don't know, fourth, fifth pair of socks that I'm knitting exactly with this pair of needles and they are still completely straight and the bamboo uh, needle at this point would already look like a boomerang. <laughs> so yeah, this is the sock. It's just the first one. I don't have the second one yet. I still have a lot of yarn left. I can show you that beautiful yarn. It's just a fuchsia color with some specks of blue, some specks of red and orange. Yeah, it's the, usually not my kind of color. For socks, I would even wear it. But anyway, I'm not allowed to fall in love with it because it's for my mom. So, back into the bag. The other project that I am working on at the moment is a long-term project. But I have actually knit at it almost monogamously, just sometimes when I needed a portable knit, I was working on these socks that I just showed you. And yeah, it is a blanket. I have watched so many podcasts with blankets and in the beginning, the first time I saw one, I was like, no, I will never need one. No, no, why should I need one? So much work, such a long project. And at some point I have seen more and more and I've seen beautiful blankets on Instagram and yeah, I was bitten by the bug and now I started my own blanket, which looks like this. So let me start on one end. Here. So I have started this blanket on the 1st of January of 2017 and my goal is to make one square per day. So far I have been very good and I have made almost two squares a day up to now. Today is February 5th, so I am on a good track. Um, as a pattern I am using... Um, I, I'm my, my project is based on the pattern Memory Blanket by Georgie Nicholson on Ravelry. However, uh, I am using worsted and DK weight yarn and I cast on less stitches than she recommends. And so it is 15 times 15 uh, stitches each square, so I have 30 stitches that I cast on. And then in the center of that there are these two directional decreases that create the square shape. And I really like it. Yeah, so why why do I do it in worsted and DK weight yarn? Actually, most of my projects are uh, are this yarn weight. I have, I'm a quite new sock knitter. Maybe one and a half years ago I started knitting socks, so I don't have so many fingering weight scraps. And also shawls or something like this. I prefer in thicker weight just because they, they are warmer and squishier and I don't know, fingering weight is so light and yeah. it has its qualities but I'm usually more of a, of a DK weight person so that's also what most of my scraps are, DK weight. Cool, so yeah, let me talk quickly about the goal with this project. I want to have a blanket that is 2 meters long and 140 centimeters wide. And this means I calculated the, go the gauge out of this um, after I had a few squares. And it means that I will have to knit 352 squares. And so if you see, if I manage to make one per day for every day of this year, I will finish before December. Or let's say if I am skipping some days, then let's say in December for sure, I should be able to finish that blanket. And that's the goal. I am confident that it will happen. Let's see. Good. Ah uh, yeah, the scraps that I am 
keeping for this project are here in this pretty basket that I got from my mom for Christmas. <laughs> Actually they don't all fit in here so the rest is in this bag. Which is also a bag made by me, a giant one, but it has some flaws so I will not show it. It was the one of the first things that I've ever sewn. So what else do we have? I have some notes here so let me check quickly. Alright, yeah, we have uh, a spinning project and this is Fiber by Malabrico, Malabrico Noob in the Potheon colorway. This is one of my most favorite colorways. So the first time I, I bought this colorway was about one year ago. It was a skin of Malabrico Arroyo in Potheon colorway and I need a pair of leg warmers out of it and I was so in love with it. You see it's quite crazy, it has a red and yellow and different blues and some petrols in it. But if you if you knit it up it turns out uh, almost grey from far away. But if you look closer you see this vivid um, selection of colors. It's I think it's an amazing yarn. Anyway, I was tempted to try spinning that colorway also because I think it will turn out nicer even when there are longer stretches of those colors. And this is what I've got so far. I am spinning this on my spinning wheel, which is a uh, Ash for Traditional. One, it's an old one, it comes from the 80s, or I think early 80s, late 70s. Uh, it's a bit hard to tell, because it's somehow in between those models that the Ash for timeline on their website um, suggests. And yeah, I have painted my bobbin. <laughs> uh, yeah, I have restored that spinning wheel by myself. It's so this is the spinning project. And let's keep uh, in this topic of Malabrigo colorway Potheon. I have some more yarn in that colorway because as I said I really loved uh, my leg warmers that were made out of this so I bought some more of Malabrigo Potheon and I have here it's Arroyo in the in the Potheon colorway. So this is a pure superwash merino wool, 335 yards or 305 meters and approximately 100 grams. And the recommended needle size is US 4 to 6 or 3.5 to 4 millimeter and it is made in Peru. I love these colors. I don't know. It's just it's a colorway that if I see it online, uh the picture that they have on the on the most web shops, I would not choose it. It's just when I see it, when I saw it in person in the yarn shop, uh I really fell in love with it. So I have actually four skeins of that. I hope that there is no cat hair on it. But if then please forgive me, I have a cat and I put it now here onto my sofa. Usually I store it cat free, but my sofa is sometimes taken over by the cat, so I'm sorry. Here it is, this wonderful, wonderful yarn. And my plans with this are a sweater or a cardigan. And I need some inspiration here because I would like to have something simple with stockinet and maybe some reverse stockinet sections, like maybe uh, vertical panels of reverse stockinet, maybe along the sleeve or also um, under the arms or so. And maybe some interesting construction, like casting on along the, the middle and then eating sideways or something like this. This would be cool, but it could also be just a top down or it could also be seamed. I'm, I'm not a... I am not determined on the construction, but I think it should be simple and not have any cables or any lace because I want these colors to pop out in the best way they can. Yeah, maybe I will just come up with my own uh, idea, but at the moment I don't have enough time to think about it and do the calculations and everything. That's why this yarn is still lying around and waiting. I'm very looking forward to knitting with it because I really love it. So. Yeah, I think that's all I have here. 
Maybe I will show you one last thing, which is my unicorn. And I forgot I should have shown that in the beginning together with my other recently or less recently finished objects. Let me just quickly get it. Uh, it needs to, uh, I need to brush its hair a bit before it can come on camera because it was sleeping. So this year is my friend the unicorn which I have knit last year in, on the occasion of the Unicorn Knit Along uh, hosted by Christine from the Yarngasm podcast and Magdalena from the Wolf and Chelsea podcast. And this was such a great inspiration, ladies. I was, I mean, I told you guys already, but I was so happy that you did that knit along because otherwise I would have never come up with the idea of knitting a unicorn and yeah. The, the, the yarns in this one are all plant dyed yarns that I dyed by myself. Leftovers for this rainbowy mane and tail and this here is indigo dyed yarn, the light blue one. And the yellow uh, nose is uh, birch leaves, birch tree leaves. And this horn is actually a solar dyed uh, colorway with various different plants in a, in a jar. And yeah, the pattern does not exist yet, I have made it up and I know I promised a couple of you that I will release this pattern and I have to ask for your forgiveness because I don't have enough time. The thing is I wrote some notes but they are not clear enough uh, to properly write the pattern so I will have to need it again. And at the moment I have other things on my mind and yeah. So I'm sorry that this might take still quite a while but at some point there will be a pattern for that. I'm quite positive about Good. So that was it. I hope you enjoyed it and maybe we are going to do this again some other time. Um, if you would like to get in touch with me or have some questions or comments, I would very much love that. So please write me either on Instagram or on Ravelry. I will put the names here so you can take note. And yeah, otherwise, if you didn't like it, doesn't matter, forget about it. <laughs> uh, yeah, have a good time and happy knitting. Bye!